On today's episode, I'm working with On One Photo Raw 2022. I'm going to show you why I think the Line Mask tool is awesome. It really is awesome. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Today, I'm working with On One Photo Raw 2022. This should not be a real long video, but I really want to show you why I think the line mask tool for masking images is such an awesome tool. It really works well. It works with straight lines. It works with curves. You'll see why I like it so much here in a minute. And by the way, there's a new update for On One Photo Raw 2022 coming out this month. It's going to be 2022.5. So that's going to be very good. And it's on sale right now. My promo code doesn't work when the item is on sale. But if you'll click on my affiliate link in the description below, it'll take you to the sale if you don't own On One yet. I make a small commission when you do that, and it helps my channel. And I really appreciate it when you do that. So if you're interested in picking up On One Photo Raw 2022 click on my affiliate link in the description below and it'll take you right to the cell thank you a couple days ago i was down in the city of pittsburgh doing some architectural photography trying out my iphone 13 pro max just to see what kind of results i could get and i was really pleased with the results this is one of the images now this is a raw file by the way i want to jump right into the line mask tool but i did some basic adjustments on this file this is what it originally looks like, and this is after my adjustments. I straightened it a little bit with Transform. I ran uh, No Noise AI on it, which I always do, which is exceptional software. I love that. I just used the On One Standard Profile in this, and I used AI Auto, which gave me really good results. And then I just tweaked up my overall adjustments here just a little bit. Gave it a little extra vibrance. I didn't do too much here. But again, here's the before and here is the after. But now we're going to jump right into the line mask tool. Now, the second thing I did was went to effects. Okay. And I used the color enhancer. Now, let me turn on the color enhancer. And you can see here, basically what I did in blue, I upped the saturation in blue. And also in orange, I gave orange a saturation increase as well as aqua. Aqua is going to be in this area of this building over here. So that's that. Here's the color enhancer before and after. But notice these um, windows over here. They get a little bit of a blue tint on there. Check it out before the adjustment. See, they're more neutral looking. And I want to bring that back. So I'm going to use the line mask tool to bring those back. Again, we're in the color enhancer. And what we need to do is mask out these windows. So let's click on the mask icon. And right now we're in the regular masking tool. We need to get to the line mask tool, which you're going to find right here. You just click on this icon and that gives you the line mask tool. Now this tool is really cool. Not only does it give you lines, but it gives you curves. If you've ever worked with Photoshop's pen tool, which can be kind of a complicated tool to use, this works kind of like the pen tool, only it's a lot easier. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to do a straightforward, straight line masking first, and then I'll show you how curves work, how to make curved lines. It's very simple. The first thing we want to do is we have to set a point down. So with the left click of your mouse, come up to a window, say like right here. Let me go ahead and zoom in so we can really see what we're doing here. Okay, it does help to zoom in. Okay, but I want you to notice something. See right here where it says feather? I'm at 15%. I'm going to take that down to like 10, 10 pixels. I believe that's going to be like a pixel, like 10 pixels. Usually a good starting point. Opacity, this is important. You want your opacity 100%. Now you can take your opacity anywhere you want. You could give it 75, 50, 25, anywhere you want. But I want to totally mask out these windows. So I need a 100% opacity. And you have two modes. You have paint out and paint in. I want to be on paint out. I'm just going to click a line right here. Now I'm going to work. I'm just going to, ma again, mask this out. Now I can even get in this black area here. There's no paint on there or blue tint on there but we can do that let's click right here and then you just drag make that click left click with your mouse and drag down and click here come over and click again it's really simple if you overshoot and you clicked right here see how i have that 
see that line pulls out. I'm not clicking anything, but I can come back and hover over this square and readjust it. You see that? And you can readjust it later on as well. And I'll show you how that works. But let me come up and click here and just click over to here. Now, when I do, you see that negative paint bucket there? Because remember, I'm painting out. Now, all I have to do is give this a click. And you see it totally removes that. Now, if we take a look at the mask itself, let's click on Done. And let's click View. You can see I have that nice feathered edge. Isn't that cool right there? Now, let's go ahead and click the View again so we can see. Now, let's go back to the Line Mask tool again. And we have it. And if you hover over a mask you've already created, you'll see that uh, kind of aqua line there. You could click with the cursor on here and you could come here and you can readjust like this. You see that? So you can click on any of these squares, click left click with your mouse and you can reposition things, which is really nice if you messed it up. Okay, so you can readjust things. It's pretty good. Now in the center, you'll see a circle here. This is where you can make a curve and I'll show you how curves work here in a second, but you can make a curve in or out, whatever you want to do. So like that, so I can come in here and if you just hover over, you'll see there's that circle and I can make a curve there if I wanted to. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I want to add to this, I can come here and click and let's just quickly go ahead and fix this one up. I can even come outside the canvas here, come up, click over to here, click on my bucket and that goes away. And then I'll just come quickly here. And this is really fast and efficient. But the feathering is really nice. So it really helps you to get really accurate adjustments. I'm not perfect there, but it's going to be perfect. It's going to look good. Because I stayed in that black area. And remember, in that black area, there is no blue tint. So it's not going to matter one way or the other. I only want to get rid of this blue tint. And there we go. And now let's go down here and, you know, I could do the same thing down here. I don't want to get too long because this is simple right very simple and easy to do but let's click here and click here and click the bucket but you get the idea i'm going to go ahead and fill these other two in here just to save time and then i'm going to show you a little bit about curves and i am back let me go ahead and show you my mask i went ahead and finished the rest of the windows let's view the mask so you can see look how nice these masks turned out they have that nice feathered edge on them that little 10 pixel feathered edge very simple and easy to use. Now, let me show you how it works with a curve. Let me go and uh, look at the image again by clicking on view again. And here's my overall before. Here's before color enhancer. And here is after. But you notice how my window stayed nice and pretty neutral there. And I like that. I went ahead and zoomed in because you see this circle right here. I'm going to show you how to select this. Now, I don't really need to select this to adjust it. But I just want you to see how a circle works. Now let's go back and click on the mask tool and make sure we have the line mask tool selected. So here's how you make circles. Say we wanted to select this circle right here. Click one time and then we could come over to an area like right here and click. Come back and you see that circle in the center, grab this and you can go either way. But you see, I can just line it up with that circle there. And then I could come down here and maybe find a point like right here, click, come back to the center here and drag that to match that shape. And maybe come over here. And you gotta be careful here. Sometimes you need a lot more points. And then I can come back on this one and move it. So you can come back and move things. I'm gonna click right here, come back to this part, and just drag that down. But you see how easy that works? Click right here. And you always have to come back to the center. And when you see that circle, that's where you make the shape. And again, you can just pull it in or out, whichever you need. Now let's come up here. Let's do another one. And let's click the center circle and adjust that shape. And now let's come the whole way over to here. Let me come to the center and pull this up like so. And that's what you do. And then right now I have a negative bucket. So let's click it. And now you can see there was a little bit of color in there and it is gone. And now let's go over and well, first let's click done. And now we can take a look. Let's take a view here. And there's that circle right there, okay? So let me click view again. But if you don't want this, all you have to do is grab that same tool again, that mask tool, make sure it's selected. Hover over this circle, click on it, and now I can just hit delete. And that is gone. But that's how you make a circle. It's very simple. Let me go ahead and click done. 
And now I want to fit this back to screen. As I said, the line mask tool is an awesome tool. Once you get the hang of it, you can follow along any shape, any curve that you want. Now let's do a few more adjustments on this image. Now I'm going to start working with local adjustments. So let's click on local and you'll notice I have some adjustments here already. Okay. So I have like, I dehaze the left of the building. Let me turn this on. These are all shut off. I'll turn it on. And as you can see, I dehaze the left side of this building. Here's the before and here's the after. Let me open this up and you'll see I just pulled the haze back to the left to dehaze it a bit. And let's open up this mask. And I use the line mask tool to draw this mask very simply. I'm not going to do that one for you. It's very simple. But I'm going to show you a little more intricate one here in a sec. So let me go ahead and close this mask. Let's close this local adjustment here. Now, every one of these local adjustments was done with the line mask tool. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Light and bottom window down here. This window is a little dark. Let me turn this on. You can see it's a little lighter now. The next one is lower highlights and gray metal on the left building. So let me turn this one on and see these this area right in here. I use the line mask tool for that. Here's the before and here's the after. And let me go to the next and remove highlights from the middle window on the left building here is the before and here's the after see right here i just lower the highlights again before and after again the line mask tool remove highlights in the upper left window left building so let's turn this one on right up here you can see i reduce the highlights there here's the before and here's the after and then the last thing i did was adjusted this i'm calling this a filigree like this really cool, this is why I took the shot, because I love this uh, filigree on this building with the blue. Okay, so here is the before, and here's the after. Now let me open this up so you can see what I've done here. All I've done really was pulled the haze back a little bit to intensify this blue a little bit, and also really bumped up the structure, but I only want it on the filigree, right? So let's take a look at this mask. Let me click on view. You can see the mask, and I did that with the line mask tool. I'm going to go ahead and reset this. Let's go back to view, and I'll recreate it. Now right now we have a black hide all mask, so we don't see anything on that adjustment but let's go ahead and make that adjustment and i think this will really cement what i'm trying to teach you today how easy this line mask tool is to use especially when you want to make intricate selections that have just straight lines in and also it works equally as easy for making curves as i showed you just a little bit ago by the way the way i made my selection initially was to invert this mask so you can see I made my adjustment and I was just looking at the filigree and after I got it the way I liked it, I went ahead and inverted it again to hide it. And now I'm going to use the line mask tool. Let's click on the mask tool right here and make sure we have the line mask tool selected, which I do. And so what I'm going to do is just come right here and click and make a point, come the whole way down, click and make another point, come right over to here, click and make a point right here and come the whole way up right like this even outside the canvas and come right over here and click and now i got to be in paint in mode and i am and if you need paint out you can come here and get in paint out but we want paint in so just give this a click and right there my filigree is there now i could come here and click and keep working okay now i'm going to click here click here Come outside the canvas, come back over and click here. Click the paint bucket and just like that. But you can see how quick. I'm going to do this quicker here so you can really see how easy this is to do. Click here, click here, click here, click here. And the paint fills it in. Now remember, I'm at a feather of 10%. You can make this feathering anywhere from 10 to 100 Okay, I'm calling it percent, but it's probably pixels. I'm not sure how they go by that, but you can, either way, I think you get the drift. Let's click here again, click again, click down here. And if I click too far, I click out here. All I have to do is get on that square and move it back in. We can, And as I said, you can go back and readjust anything, anytime you want to. Now let's click the paint bucket tool and there we go. Now let's click done. You have to click done when you're done. And now here's the overall before and here is after but see again before and after but that's how easy it is and if we click view you can see the job i've done but that little 
I'm going to call it a 10 pixel radius or 10%, whichever you want to call it. But you can see it does a really nice job feathering that in beautifully. Now let's click view again. And there we go. Now here's my overall before and here is my after. But everything was pretty much done with the line tool. I did some local adjustments and I also used uh, the color enhancer effect just to bring out the saturation on the orange type tones, the blue tones and these aqua tones over here. And everything was masked in or out with the line mask tool. Well, there it is, everyone, the line mask tool. How cool of a tool is it? It's pretty awesome. I hope you agree with me. If you think so, let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. That way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.